Hey guys, Baby Pick here, back with another video. Today we are looking at the Noisy Cricket Shock Horror. We are finishing Noisy Cricket Week with this video. Bit of a retrospective, you know, just a chilled out chat about the Noisy Cricket and what could be improved for a V2, what other iterations we'd like to see. Um, Wismek and Jabo have said that they will definitely be watching this video. So anything that you would like improving on the Noisy Cricket, please put in the comments because they're going to be reading all your comments as well. So let's get into it. What would we like to see from this going forwards? Um, and don't get me wrong at all, as I've said in the previous videos, I enjoy this mod, I like this mod a lot, but you know, there's no such thing as a perfect mod. Let's fix it. Let's make it even better. Um, a couple of things I would like to see, and this might just be me, I don't know how commercial these things are. Two things I would like to see in terms of other versions of this. I'd like to see a 24mm version of this. Um, with it being a series mod, it's capable of tremendous power, and so you, you can fit in tremendous builds that can go with that power. 24mm RDAs do allow that extra space to build in, um, and I think 24mm RDAs would be cool on this if they didn't overhang. So a 24mm version of this, in my opinion, would be really cool. Um, I think builders would love building on it. Um, Another thing I would like to see, and this is the one that's probably maybe just me because I'm stuck in the past, but I would like to see a dual parallel version of the cricket. Um, simply because I really enjoy vaping dual parallel mechanical mods. And it's such a good form factor, I don't think they'd need to change much, really, um, to make a, a dual parallel version. You know, literally this, but accepts batteries in dual parallel style -y. Um, because I, I still, you know, I've got this mod that's coming up to review soon that I bought, the uh, Signature Tips Dual Parallel mod, and that is, I love vaping like that, that's how I, that's how I vape, and uh, I think that would be really cool as well. Um, so those are two additions to, to the, to the family of Noisy Crickets that I would like to see. Back on the N80 build, it's a really chilled out build this, it comes out about 0.65, um, no it doesn't, it comes out 0.7 and it's because it, you know there's less airflow in the in the peat tree, um, so I just like to dial it back a bit and it's just a really chilled out vape um, that I really enjoy. Um, dripping on it with this as well, shameless plug for the uh, Coilmaster oiling can. You just uh, you just squirt it in like that. Bosh! Press the bottom it like that. And when you're not pressing it, that's it. You know, it doesn't come out or anything. Pretty cool. Allows you to sort of drip one-handed if that makes sense. <laughs> anyway, um, so yeah, so those are those are two additional mods that I would like to see. Uh, Wizmek and Jabo do. I don't know. I don't know if it's a thing. I don't know if it can be done. Um, <clears throat> but those are those are two options. Um, talking about the actual mod and what we'd like to see from a V2, I would like to see a better switch. I think that is the number one complaint of users of the Noisy Cricket. Um, it's just a bit funky, isn't it? It's just a bit. Something about it that's not—it's just a—it's just a touch funky. I mean, people say that it, it's prone to getting juice inside it and getting all gunked up and sticky. I think it's—it's it's not very responsive. It's not very—you don't really know when it's pressed or not. Sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. Um, it being on top as well, it creates that awkward. Do you want to hold it like this? Do you want to hold it like this situation? That tends to be the way I'm holding it. Uh, you know, just like that. But but most people would agree that a finger firing cricket would be cool as hell. Um, so in terms of the actual switch, I think they could do something to make it less prone to gunking up and 
uh, you know, it's just a plastic button at the end of the day, and it does just push that little distance, uh, you know, the contact through. I think a, a more elaborate switch is possible, you know, um, and if possible at all, a side firing switch would be amazing like that, so comfy to use like that. Um, even if that made it a tiny bit, if that had to make it a tiny bit bigger, I'd be cool with that. Um, so the switch is definitely an area that they could look at. We're just shooting the shit here, guys. So it's just opinions. Um, 510. Now the 510. There's a couple of things with the 510. It's a hybrid 510, which adds to the aesthetics. You know, adds to the aesthetics. It also had adds to the voltage drop and conductivity. They're all positives of the 510. Um, but there, with hybrid top caps, comes a slight safety potential, you know, potential for a slight safety issue. People might not have a long enough 510 on the actual atomizer, something to watch out for, uh, you know, potential there. Um, it also creates quite a faff of unscrewing it, getting the battery out, re-screwing it on, uh, and it, it can be quite fiddly, I guess. Um, the other thing leveled at the 510 is that the insulators around it could be better, you know, it, it it, it looks a little bit cheap upside down it looks a little bit cheap um, so that's possibly something possibly something they could look at um, but overall the 510 I'm not, I'm not hugely worried about that uh, safety now this is another very contentious thing in the videos I've already made this week there has been comments about the lack of safety this mod has in this modern era, in this new age, where so many new vapors are jumping on board, wanting to blow clouds, um, safety of this mod, it, it has no safety, um, and it is possible for it to have safety, you know, let's not forget mods such as the Tesla Subbox, if you remember that, that was a dual parallel mod, but it had and it had no screen, but it had safety features. You know, it had short protection. The light flashed if uh, if it was if it was worried that there was a shot. Uh, it had reverse battery protection uh, and all those sort of things. You know, so these are things that can happen. Uh, a battery indicator would be a good safety feature. You know, there's nothing to stop someone over draining their batteries on this, which is not a good thing. Um, so something that just sort of told you the batteries were getting low somewhere on the mod somehow would be a, a good safety feature. The short protection would be really good, maybe under point two. If anyone tries to use anything under point two, it says, no, this is technically a short, or, you know, this is too low, too low for this mod, or something like that. That would be an excellent safety feature. That would also stop people accidentally shorting anything. Um, so that would be good. Uh, the reverse battery thing, you know, it's completely plausible for someone to put the batteries the wrong way around on this by accident. Uh, it'd be nice if it had protection from that. Um, so, if there's any way of featuring safety in this, that's got to be a positive. Obviously, people don't want to spoil the aesthetics, people don't want to spoil the natural mechanical hit of this mod, uh, but if there's anything that can be done to improve the safety on it, then I would be all for that. Um, overall quality of the mod. Okay, so... The quality of the mod. Now this is harsh because Wismic and Jabo are working to a price point. They're mass producing. They're trying to make it easily accessible. But if you put it like this, would you pay an extra ten dollars, twelve dollars for this mod if it had better contacts? You know, uh, other thing. Another thing that's been raised this week in the comments: the contacts, particularly the bottom contact, looks quite flimsy. Um, you know, would better insulators, you know, would you pay an extra ten dollars for better contacts, better insulators, um, a better quality of switch? Um I would, I certainly would, you know, so maybe maybe the quality of the, the V two, if it needs to be ten dollars more, fifteen dollars more, twenty dollars more, I would be I'd be down with that. You know, it'd still be a budget mod. Still be what is it seen sold at? It'd still be under fifty dollars. You know, it'd be the fifty dollars ish for this mod with those extra things. Um, if they could just lift the quality a tiny bit. I know I'm sounding like a right nag, and like you don't even at this point you've no idea why you're watching this video. But I just think that would be cool if they could slightly raise the quality of the mod overall contacts, connections, switches. You know. 
Um, so that's something to think about. So these are all things that um, I would look to improve on it. I would also love to see that 24mm version, and I would also love to see a dual parallel version, but that's just me. Um, let me know your thoughts. Let me know in the comments what you think about what we've talked about. Um, yeah, please, and I will be replying to those comments. People will see those comments, and we will maybe get some of these things done in the next one. You never know. You never know. You never know. Stranger things have happened. Um, so please comment below with why you don't own a noisy cricket, or what you would like to see from one, what would what would have made you buy one, what you'd like to see improved, what you think of the improvements I've raised. Anything in the comments would be fantastic. Uh, I've got loads of stuff coming up. Back to reviews next week. I've uh, got that dual parallel mod, got the Lush RDA from Watofo, got a vlog to do, and I've got that video on using N80. Um, and I might talk about boutique wire in that video as well, because it's a bit controversial topic at the moment. Um, I've been Vic. And I'll see you again really soon. Bye-bye.